So this track, uh, this, this cue is uh, an in-progress piece of music I'm writing for an upcoming series um, about AI. And the request has been a lot of you know, music that sounds like creating. Um, and sometimes it can, it can be uh, darker, but they don't want it to sound too electronic or, or overly synthy. Uh, so the idea is to have, you know, kind of moving arps and stuff, but with organic sounding instruments. Um, so I really like this circle bells sort of sound because it just feels very organic, sounds, you know, very acoustic and earthy. Um, and I wanted to have this sort of bending between ma major and minor. So I came up with a couple chords that I really like, these, the, the voicings, it's kind of over an E pedal. Like an E major with like this flat six, and then C major nine, with like this flat six. And so you're getting this like the G, the G and the G sharp uh, playing off each other. And uh, to keep it kind of further off kilter, it's in five. Uh, and, and just sort of building this like kind of growing sense of uneasiness, um, playing with some of the, uh, taking like sounds that are acoustic and, and, and processing and, and tweaking them. So I'll go through the track and sort of explain uh, what's happening. It starts out with this circle bells, which is um, doing an arpeggiated figure with those odd chord voicings. This is an alto glockenspiel reversed thing on the downbeat. And so right there I wanted to have some sort of machine-like thing happening. So if I turn off these effects, this is actually uh, the alto glockenspiel doing a, a mallet roll but I'm running it through tremolation, uh, some bandpass filtering, and echo boy, and so it ends up sounding like this. And I liked it because it sounded like a machine. It sounds almost like the, the gears whirring, and, and I put some, some panning on it so it kind of has some motion as the track goes along, kind of leading to the next, uh, next phrase. So if we go back to the beginning, you'll hear You'll hear that. And then I have, um, I do have some synthetic elements here. It's this low, kind of grungy, bending signed wave, because I wanted to have like the sort of, not Terminator, but kind of low, uneasy, unsure if this is gonna be a good thing or a bad thing. And then here I'm using this is actually from the uh, modern animated percussion. I took layers and I pitched them down um, and kind of stretched them out. And this was just something I stumbled upon using the random button. And it sounds like a bowed gong. And so I just kind of used pitch shifting to make it kind of fall into the chord progression that I needed it. That layer right there is also from the, uh, the map, Modern Animated Percussion. Um, just kind of like a nice, on um, the downbeat of each measure, hitting. And then here, there was this great shaker figure from the Modern Animated Percussion. Um, uh, but I pitched it down um, an octave, and I'm running it through Isotope Trash, and then some uh, bandpass filtering, just to give it just to make it feel kind of like far away, kind of atmospheric. I didn't want it to be too kind of crisp. I wanted it to be definitely more like low and sort of like um, not soft, but woof, woofy, if that makes sense. So when it comes in, it's almost like felt more than heard. And then 
underneath all this, I have this base from um, this like really cool little uh, library called Cruiser, which kind of looks like this like 80s throwback. It seems to be like a, a real quick way to get at like some some of those like classic synths um, sounding stuff from uh, kind of analog synths and stuff like that. Um, and it's got like this delay built into it, which is great. And I'm running this also through trash and then rolling off almost all the highs uh, underneath all these chords. So I'm just kind of tilting back and forth between like that E major and C major. And it's coming in here. You'll hear here, I've had these tremolo strings kind of rising underneath uh, along with the whole track. Kind of like using as many of those little crunch voicings as I can. I love when you have, I think one of my favorite sounds in all chords is when you have the, uh, the minor ninth. Not just that, but spread it, spread it out by an octave. I was told once that's the only real dissonant interval we, st we have left now because everything else sounds acceptable. But anytime I can fit that into a voicing, I love it when you have that, that, that sound. That, that minor ninth is great, so I fit it in as many voicings as I can. And then I'm starting to bring in the, uh, the brass here. running it through R4, uh, just great reverbs. And the bottom end has got this pulse, which I love. It's still got this like dirty grunginess to it, but the pulse really kind of keeps it moving. And then on top, I have this rising line, just to kind of help us lead to a peak. Because again, this whole thing is just a build. It's not, uh, it's not built on melody, it's, it's built on um, just kind of like the energy rising to a peak and then coming down. And then right here, this is actually the Prophet 12 and I'm running it through the, the big sky pedal and putting on some distortion and as the uh, as the track progresses I've been raising the girth the air and the hack and just sort of like letting letting the sound sort of just fall apart as it goes and so as the track kind of fades away you're hearing almost like this signal that sounds like I don't know like a distant radio transmission kind of fading off and uh, just getting really distorted um, just any way I feel like you can make like a drone sound more interesting, you know, so as it kind of keeps going, raise the slop, get some pitch bend in there, you know, add some, just kind of damage the audio. Yeah. So that's under, underneath everything that's going on. through but as we get to the climax I'm automating the reverb so that we're 
just drowning it. And it kind of just dies away. And then here, we're just left with this Prophet 12 doing these sort of like just voice things that are getting destroyed. The circle bells are still going.